Thanks for having me. My name is Shai Reshef. I'm the president of University of the People. Let me start by uh, sharing with you a few stories. Malik. Malik was a student in Pennsylvania, realizing that he is accumulating debt that he will never be able to pay back. He decided to take uh, some time off from school, make money, and then go back to school. He came to, he actually found a job in New York, quit school, um, took a train to Penn Station, New York, gave a call to the place that offered him the job, just to realize that the job is not there for him. So he's telling me, I was there with a $20 bill, backpack with a jeans and t-shirt, no place to sleep, no university to come back to. I became homeless. He slept on the floor for a few months, every day sending email to places, hopefully to find a job, until he found a job as a ticket boy in a, a Madison Square Garden. There he started rebuilding his life. He found a place to live. He started making some money. However, it was not enough to, uh, have ma to, to go back to school. He felt hopeless. He can't go back to school. He can't advance his career because he doesn't have a degree. So he started looking around until he found University of the People. For him and for other people, homeless or other people who cannot afford high, uh, higher education for financial reasons, the gates for, for uh, higher education is now open. Well, uh, Dolores. Dolores was living in Haiti when the devastating uh, earthquake hit in 2010. She had to quit her studies due to the incredible damage to the earthquake. She moved to the United States and applied for asylum in the hope of to get her life, her life back and providing to her family. She knew that she could not find a, meaning, a meaningful job until she had completed her degree. However, she was stuck with a, with a dilemma. She didn't have a proper legal status to apply for school in the US and definitely could not afford higher, edu higher education. So she was in debt, she was in debt, and didn't know uh, how she could move uh, forward until she found University of the People. Dos Dos Dolores received a scholarship, earned a BA degree, and now she's, uh, she has a job that can provide for herself and for her family back in Haiti. For people like Dolores, the gates of higher education are now open. Finally, um, Omar. Omar was born, was born in Syria, in Aleppo. One day, his mother woke him up and said, hey, your brother is outside, there are bombs. I want you to go out, bring him back home. He went outside, he couldn't find his brother. He went to the hospital, found him there without a leg. He was telling me, that he was cried for half a day. He couldn't stop crying until actually his brother calmed him and said, don't worry, we'll manage. He said that at that point, he promised that he will make sure that his brother will walk again. So as, as after his brother started his recovery, he carried him on his back across the, across the border uh, to Turkey. And luckily he found an NGO that arranged for them to move to, to move to the US. While his brother did get a prosthetic leg, they received no further support in the US. Omar moved from one temporary job to another, supporting them through his, this temporary job. He knew that the only way he could make it is if he has the education. But as he told me, I couldn't afford it. Well, until he found University of the People. For people like Omar, who cannot get higher education because of political reasons, the door to higher education are now open. If you had to guess how many students are deprived from higher education worldwide, I guess you will be shocked. 
UNESCO stated that in 2025, 98 million students will not have seats in the existing universities. Close to 100 million qualified students will not, will not be able to go to, go to school. This is, this is the very reason we started University of the People, the first nonprofit, tuition free, accredited American online university dedicated to opening the gates to higher education to those who, who had no other opportunities for higher education. When I announced the University of the People in the UN, it was a significant turning point for me. Also, after being in for-profit education for over uh, 20, uh, 20 years and being in charge of educational programs for hundreds of thousands of students, I started the first online university in Europe. We partner with the University of Liverpool to deliver their online degrees. That's where I learned how powerful online learning can be. We had students from all over the world. They can stay with their family, keep their job, and still getting this great European education. While having this great success, deep inside, I felt uncomfortable because for most people, this great education was nothing but a wishful thinking. They couldn't, have, they couldn't have, simply couldn't afford it. It was simply too expensive. I sold this university and the rest of my business and I went into semi-retirement only to realize that it's not for me. I wanted to continue, but I felt that I don't want to do it this more of the same. I felt it's my time to give back. I wanted to, but I wanted to do it in a way that will have an impact on the world. And I wanted to do it through education. Because what I learned through my years of experience is that if you educate one person, you can change a life. But if you educate many, you can change the entire world. So I looked around and I realized that everything that made this a European university so expensive is already available for free. Open source technology, open educational resources, and the new internet culture where people are, are willing to teach and, and they study from each other for free. So I said to myself, all I had to do is to put it together. So I did. The day I announced, the day I, I announced uh, the um, the University of the of University of the People, the New York Times wrote a page about it. And the next day, I already had hundreds of emails of professors who wanted to help to make this uh, dream come true. We have now over twenty three thousand volunteers. Instructors, academics, supporters all jumped on board to make this university um, a, reali a reality. And they come from all ranks of universities. Our President Council, Chair by John Sexton from NYU, include Nick Dirks from Columbia, George Rapp, the President Emeritus of, uh, of uh, Columbia, Torsten Weiser, President of Rockefeller University and a Nobel Prize laureate, and many, many others. Our provost is from Colombia. Our deans are from NYU and Princeton. And our academic leadership are coming from great universities. Oxford, Harvard, MIT, Michigan, and many others. In 2014, when we received our initial accreditation, we had 500 students. Since then, we doubling every, every year. Now, we have 57 thousand students from two, over 200 countries and territory, territories. And our students come to us in order to have a better life, to have a better future for themselves. And they are not a typical, they are not, and they are not typical, uh, typical students. Um, we have survivors of the genocide in Rwanda, the earthquake in Haiti, people who barely make their living, live, barely make living, and there are thousands and thousands of refugees from all over the world who do not have access to, uh, to higher education. 
We are the opportunity for those who have no other opportunity. Out of the 57,000 students, 600 students are refugees. More than any university in the world, and to my knowledge, more than all the universities in the world combined. With generous scholarship, we enable them to pursue higher education, which is the only way to lift them out of their, cur out of their current uh, situation. It is our mission not to leave anyone behind. For this reason, any student who holds a high school diploma, has sufficient English and any kind of internet connection, can join University of the People. All students take two foundation courses to test out the university pedagogy, to learn if they like uh, what they do, but also to show us that they can meet our ri rigorous academic standards. If they pass these two courses, they get credit with them and uh, continue, continue, we continue with us. We actually, um, many, our, many of our students are actually experienced hardship. For that reason, we put them when they study with us in small classes, so those who need personalized attention can get, can get it. We also mixing them every time they take a new class with uh, 20 to 30 students from 20 to 30 uh, different countries. They spend every week of the every nine uh, week course exchanging idea with their with their peers. This is a very strong academic pedagogy, peer to peer learning, and there is a very very uh, strong and clear reason for that. While the students come to us to have a better future, we have a broader goal. Just imagine what happened every time an Indian student takes a course with Pakistani students, every time Greek student take a course with Turkish students, and every time a Syrian student take a course with an Israeli student. We open their mind. We create a shift in attitude, and we teach them that those who are considered their enemies outside of the class are actually closest to them in terms of, in term of, in term of culture. From the inception of the University of the People, we design our courses to be, to be flexible. Students can access their courses anywhere, anytime, and without access to broadband. If they need to, students can study from their phones. Every time they, they take a course, it's eight weeks long. Every week starts on Thursday and ends on Wednesday. When they go into the virtual, the virtual classroom, they first find the profile of their, uh, of their, of their peers, which uh, actually resemble a Facebook uh, page. And every week when they go into, into the virtual classroom, they find the lecture notes of the week, the reading assignment of the week, and the uh, discussion question, which is the core of our, of our studies. The discussion developed all week long between the students under the supervision of the instructors. If they don't understand and they need help, the instructor is there to help them. But they, between themselves, discuss the topic of the week. By the end of the week, the students take a quiz and hand in their homework. The homework is being assessed by their peers uh, and we, we, the instructor is there to override the grade if needs to. On the ninth week, they take the final, the final exam, which is proctor. When we announced the University of the People, skeptics said, no university can lean on volunteers. And if it leans on volunteers, it will never be accredited. And even if it is accredited, it won't be financial, financially sustainable. We prove them wrong on every juncture. Online education used to be sideline of, on the sideline uh, of higher education. In this era of the coronavirus, we are now the, we are now the mainstream. However, the risk is that uh, 
the future of higher education will be forever ruined if we do not move online correctly. Everyone discovered online, everyone is moving online. However, if you move not in the right, in the right way, you're risking higher education. Because professors cannot simply lecture on Zoom for two hours and call it a day. Online learning requires skills and expertise. Professors must be specifically, uh, specifically and specially trained in the, te in the technical components, but also understand how to keep course engage the courses engaging from a distance. Online learning can be isolating by nature. There must be a human, a, a human a touch point and social interaction among, among students. We implement peer-to-peer -peer pedagogy and collaborative learning. Assignments such as group projects, peer review, and discussion forums are crucial. Students must be supported, even virtually, with virtual libraries or dedicated student advisors. All of this knowledge that we have gained over the last 12 years is now is why is is now what we what we're using and is why University of the People offered any university uh, to teach their students. We want to help other understand the power of online learning. When you, when universities inevitably reopen, they must be flexible. Students enjoy face-to-face -face learning. We know that. But universities must understand that students are now accustomed to be flexible and to be and, and to the flexibility uh, that the uh, online offer. Why should why should the students wake up at six o'clock a.m. on time to be on time in order to be on class when they can, can they can go they can sleep later and get and get a get the lecture watch the lecture online at their own at their own pace. We must balance in-person in learning with the option for further flexibility of, uh, in the schedule that we offer the students. We want, to, we want others to do it right. Failing to do so only harm the future of higher education. So this is um, what we believe at University of the People. We open the gates to, of higher education to everyone. Give the students a better chance for their future. Offer the world a better chance for peace. We will continue to grow as long as there is a need for our services and as long as there is even one student who needs our services. But you, just imagine if one million students will walk through our, our doors. What world will we have then? Thank you.